exerted in all manner of ways to destroy individual lives, which, you know, talk about the New World Order, that's part and parcel of the whole thing. How can we take artists and make them into victims? How can we destroy their lives? How can we pervert their output? Mm. Exactly, because they're, they're reaching the masses. And so how can you sort of control their message, make them susceptible to the CIA's message of mind control, for instance? Exactly. And also, because artists are really the leaders in society, they come up with the new ideas, the new images, the new poetry of the future, so to speak. So if you can turn these artists into you know, minor versions of themselves, if you can repress them, if you can distort what they have to say, then you put society at a standstill. Mm. There is no real mental, emotional progress. Right, exactly. And we've heard many times about, you know, the CIA co-opting big movements and revolutions and sort of taking them over to control the masses and control anyone that would speak out against what's going on. Just unbelievable. That's a really great article. But I want to switch gears now uh, to something new that you're working on, uh, The Magician Awakens. There you talk about guilt, sin, and mind control, and how we're seeing things like slogans, political correctness. Uh, you know, obviously we talk a lot about how they are race baiting and using racism, denying the existence of the individual, that these are all signs of guilt and things like that being used to build the society of the future. Can you expand on that? It certainly is. And uh, I use the example of the novel in the movie, A Clockwork Orange, Stanley Kubrick's movie, Anthony Burgess's novel, in which you have a violent, vicious young criminal who is the symbol of society's, you know, in heavy quotes, problem. In other words, crime, the prisons are full. What are the leaders going to do about all of this? And so they come up with a plan for aversion therapy to literally inflict tremendous guilt and a sense of disgust and repulsion in this young criminal at the very thought that he might do something wrong. And of course, they frame it as, well, this is going to solve the problem of crime. So if we exert this vicious kind of mind control on people, to keep them from being criminals, and if we insert instead a huge amount of guilt inside them, that's fine, that's good, that's okay, because then we'll have a peaceful society. Mm. And that's kind of been the watchword of, you know, the Roman Church going way, way back, the Inquisition. The whole idea was in order to keep people in the fold, we have to make them feel that they are completely guilty, that they have no life other than what we give them, and no hope and no future for themselves. They have to become part of the, you know, the audience of the system, and never an individual with his own free thoughts. So now we see that in terms of science. Now we see that in heavy quote science. Now we see that in terms of how can we reprogram the human race so that there will be no more suffering, crime, war, etc., etc., etc. So to a lot of people, this looks like a great idea. Oh, we're going to eliminate all that and we'll have a very peaceful society. But that's because more and more people have lost completely the idea that there is such a thing as the individual, mm -hmm. that the individual is free, that the individual has choice, that any of this is important. It's all about the collective, the group, and so on, the mass. And that's why these mind control programs have a real chance of taking over society completely because they promise peace, security, and all of that sort of thing. 
Exactly. And we, you know, we see that with Agenda 21 and it's, it's all, you know, man is the plague. Man must be wiped out or changed completely. Man needs saving. And we've got this article up on InfoWars today. It talks about the Vatican and the Vatican astronomers that are now on this search to find our extraterrestrial brother, basically saying that aliens might be the savior of the human race because perhaps these extraterrestrials are the unfallen of God's creation, whereas humans and our original sin, you know, we are the fallen. And so maybe once we find these saviors somewhere out there, they can rewrite everything, history as we know it, basically. What do you think about this coming out of the Vatican? Mind-boggling. <laughs> Preposterous, you know, uh, lunatic. It's this idea that uh, we want to emphasize how down, downtrodden and downfalling and, uh, and guilty earthlings are. So we'll prop up this fantasy about extraterrestrials out there who are, you know, as you say, our saviors, untouched by sin. I mean, this is just uh, bad science fiction, but they're promoting it as something real in order to emphasize once again that no one on earth really has any sort of free will because everyone is just guilty, 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 guilty. Mm -hmm. But somewhere in outer space, no doubt, this is what we've been looking for all along. It also seems to justify their astronomy program. Mm -hmm. But I think what lies behind this, really, is that the Vatican is very nervous about the actual possibility of extraterrestrial contact because it would shoot a lot of holes in their doctrine. Mm -hmm. So they would like to try to control this operation and, and uh, spin it. And this is their latest spin on it. Right, and they're even saying that perhaps if we do find the extraterrestrial brother, that we might have to rewrite everything that we think that we know, even leaving the door open for saying they are wrong and what they've been teaching you know, all these years could possibly be wrong. I mean, it's just incredible to me to think, and it also kind of makes me think about when Ronald Reagan, I think it was Reagan, said something about that if, it, if we had an attack from outer space, that would be the thing that would bring us together globally. Yeah, that's also always lurking in the background. Right. That's the idea that if we could have or stage, you know, as a, as a fake, some sort of invasion from outer space, then planet Earth would all come together, everybody would realize that we have a common goal and that we must uh, pull together in order to survive. And this is yet one more, you know, operation very much like Agenda 21. The planet is one thing. Everyone is everyone else. Everyone is all together. There are no separate individuals. That's just completely obsolete. And now we have to join as one homogenous meltdown mass and follow our leaders who will take us to, you know, the promised land or will save us from extinction in this case. It's just another prop job to try to convince everybody that uh, there is no individuality anymore. There is no freedom. There is only the group, the collective. That's what that is. Exactly. We're the lost sheep of the universe and we need saving. Uh, one of your, another article that I really tend to agree with this, I've been bringing this point up a lot with the NSA and how I feel like this slow drip of the NSA information just every few months keeping it in the news. While it's good that it keeps it in the news, at the same time it's almost just acclimating us to constant surveillance. And one of your articles sort of talks about the NSA as a form of social engineering. Yeah, I think this is very important for people to understand. I'll try to boil it down. Let's suppose that the NSA, as we all know now, is doing all of this surveillance and spying on everybody all the time. It has nothing to do with stopping terrorism. Mm -hmm. But none of us knew that. Nobody knew about it, you see. 
So we would go on our merry way saying what we want to say, living our lives and so on and so forth. That doesn't work <laughs> for the NSA or the surveillance state. We have to know that we're being spied on in order for that to become a form of social engineering. And we have to know it every day, every week, every month, a new revelation and so forth and so on. That introduces and reinforces time and time again with people the idea that they have to watch what they're saying, they have to watch what they do, they have to watch even what they think as a continuing operation an operation to keep pressing on the public the knowledge that, yes, yes, they're being spied on, they're being spied on. And that's what this drip method of release of the Snowden files is, is doing to people. It's just acclimating them, and I see it all the time around me, people becoming more cautious, more conformist. Well, I better not say that, although that's what I really think. I better not maybe go to that website. Ooh, I don't know. Maybe I better not make that phone call. That's all social engineering. That's from the top. And the surveillance state, really, half of it is letting people know that this is going on all the time so that people will conform. They'll become androids and robots. That's that story. And I, I tend to agree. It's so hard for me to put that into words, and I tr that's one of the reasons why I could not wait to get you on to, to sort of talk about this, because I feel like we're at this crossroads where human beings, we could take all of this information and become aware and awake and break free of all of these shackles. But at the same time, I feel like the machine is sort of using this awareness and really almost like a quickening is happening where this awareness is actually now assimilating us into the reality they've been trying to create this whole time. No question about it. Absolutely. And there is this tipping point. I mean, we're there. People have to make a choice. Do you want to be free? I don't care what political party or affiliation or, you know, political slogans you may have drifting around in your mind. Do you want to be a free individual who's independent? Or do you want to be part of the mass where individuality is erased as a concept? Oh, yes, we needed that in our evolution, but we don't need that anymore. All of that kind of stuff. People have to make that choice and they're being driven to it. And the whole basis of my work is to illustrate to people that the individual is not only essential and free and independent, but actually has tremendously more power than he thinks he has. Mm -hmm. And he has to access that power and use it. And that's the tipping point that we're at. People go this way or they go that way. Exactly. Well, we are out of time, but is there anything, any kind of last words or anything you kind of want to let people know about that you're working on? Well, I'm working on a piece now that's a follow-up to A Clockwork Orange, and it's exploring Huxley's A Brave New World novel with some quotes that I've never seen from it before or don't remember when I read it a couple of times years ago, but very much on the subject of mind control, drugs, the future, genetic engineering, and so forth, which I think are very eye-opening now because we're in that age. I mean, we're there. So that'll be the next uh, pop on my website. Well, we'll definitely be looking forward to that. And thank you so much for everything you're doing. Like I said, I love your work and thank you for your time today. Thank you so much. I really appreciate being here with you. Well, there you have it. The choice is ours. Will we wake up in this awareness and actually affect change? Or will we just assimilate into complacency and revel in our own surveilled slavery? The choice is ours, the red or the blue pill. Thank you all for tuning in tonight. We'll see you here again at 7 p.m. Central.